Uh, Tiffany, thank you for the intro. As mentioned, uh, my name is Katie Anderson. I'm a senior product marketing manager on the Microsoft compliance team. On the call, I also have Nick Robinson from engineering and Stephanie Beer from CXE uh, to help support and talk more about advanced e-discovery. And hopefully everyone can see my slide. Uh, here today, we're going to talk about M365's advanced e-discovery. And really, advanced e-discovery is partly a litigation tool, but it's also a great tool that companies have at their disposal and organizations can use for everything from internal investigations to responding to external or internal requests for information. And so as we look at some of the challenges that, you know, get my slides to go, some of the challenges that organizations are facing these days, the amount of increased data is presenting new legal challenges, especially in being able to understand where that electronically stored information is kept, it's created, how it's shared. And because that number is growing, and specifically from the M365 side, we're looking at how to manage that growing amount of data. So if we look at some of the numbers that we are uh, from an M365 perspective, uh, to give you an idea, there are 300 com million commercial users or seats of O365. Uh, there's also 250 million act monthly active users of Microsoft Teams. And uh, largely due to COVID and this new work situation that we're in now, that number has over doubled in the last year. We also have 38 billion daily minutes of collaboration on M365, and that's everything from sharing Teams data to using OneDrive to all of the other collaboration tools that we have at our disposal and that customers and organizations are using. Next, we have 5 billion documents that are classified using Microsoft compliance every month, and that number continues to grow as Microsoft is making investments in the compliance space as well. We have over 200 million monthly active users of SharePoint online, and that means that there's a lot of data coming out of SharePoint as well, and it's continuing to grow. And lastly, we have tens of millions of monthly active users of Yammer. And in addition to the M365 uh, landscape evolving, we also have the legal IT landscape that's evolving. And I'm going to talk about this briefly because it is really important to understanding what organizations are facing when they're looking at the legal challenges that are presented to them as the IT and uh, data requirements are continuing to grow. 63% of legal IT professionals surveyed expect their company to be conducting more investigations over the next three years. And 71% of them are considering leveraging technology or best practices in improving their legal operations. And what this means is they're having to look at the legal processes that they've had in the past and say, OK, what am I going to be doing differently? How am I going to use automation, technology, the processes and the people that I have in place to be able to respond to more and more of these data needs? 95% of those legal professionals surveyed believe that cloud-based e-discovery will become the industry norm in the next two years. And because of all of these reasons, and because we really understood that there was a demand for this from the customers that we work with and who use M365 every day, uh, we released advanced e-discovery for Microsoft 365. And advanced e-discovery in M365 gives companies the tools that they need to be able to better sort, understand, and discover their data. It allows them to discover and collect their data in place and to manage workflows all from one platform. It also allows them to accelerate their e-discovery processes. And over the next few slides, we'll be talking about how that works, why there's a customer benefit to that, uh, demoing advanced e-discovery, as well as talking about the partner opportunities that we see in the e-discovery space with M365. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Nick Robinson to talk more about advanced e-discovery and in M365. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Uh, great to be here. Uh, always good to connect with the partners and share a bit of what's been going on and what we've been hearing and what we've been working on to deliver value for our shared customers. What we thought we'd do today uh, for this portion of the presentation was talk a little bit about how advanced e discovery is kind of fitting into our customers' landscape for legal technology 
investigations technology and kind of the, the shifts that we're seeing and kind of look at as well at some of the features that have been recently delivered and a few things that we have upcoming on the roadmap. And I think that'll set a really nice context for the demo that Steph has planned for the second half of the session. And so we wanted to make sure that everyone was kind of understanding a little bit more about, you know, why Microsoft Advanced eDiscovery is fitting in, how it's helping customers, kind of what we're seeing over the last, you know, year and a half in terms of the ways that customers are utilizing this set of features. And so I just wanted to set the context on, you know, why it's great. So we're able to provide insights early into the process, you know, understand the scope, the potentially relevant content that's in Microsoft 365 quickly, kind of start your filtering process, even as you start to identify what data sources might be relevant with any discovery. And then a top ask for customers building on the usage we had in Cori Discovery was, hey, I need help to, you know, manage custodians. And I need to manage these adjacent workflows in eDiscovery around providing hold notifications. And so Advanced eDiscovery provides that as well. And we also heard that, hey, sometimes we need this higher level of processing and indexing so that we can reduce the blind spots. You know, these extra large files, these files that have a ton of embedded items, like how can we make sure that we're not missing any content? And so Advanced eDiscovery has a advanced indexing engine where you can target and re-index content that's relevant to your case and really reduce any of those blind spots that might be out there. And then, you know, it was kind of like, hey, we need a way to review some of this content. Uh, and so now, you know, Advanced eDiscovery has a full review set uh, module where you can review content, filter, sort by different properties, search, and of course, tag, annotate on your way to take the content through the process. And in the review set, we're also able to drive a lot of analytics, <clears throat> handle some of the common workflows around data calling to deduplicate, to improve kind of the relevance of your set, including some new capabilities that we'll talk about a little bit later around predictive coding and using some of the models that you can train within your organization to identify potential relevance of content. So just wanted to kind of set that stage. And with that, we can go to the next slide. And, you know, we're, we're hearing from customers and hearing from partners that what customers are saying as they adopt and as they evaluate is, hey, it's about risk management, it's about efficiency, and it's about managing our costs. And so we believe that, you know, eDiscovery and Microsoft 365 has a really strong position with these three value props. And so, you know, you can get the full comprehensive audit data, you can review both Office 365 and non-Office 365 data quickly. You can kind of iterate and target your collection activities. So you're only handling the relevant content, really reduce what you're exporting and exporting kind of uh, content that's ready for production, that's already been processed, that things have already been extracted. Uh, and then of course, lowering that cost for custodian average. And we've seen some really cool results here. Uh, and we have some case studies later that we can share as a takeaway as well. So, you know, one of the main things is that uh, our customers are looking at the EDRM model and thinking about their technology suite and how it fits into their process and what they need to have to do, how they can land these things. And so we wanted to kind of quickly map out how core and advanced fit together with some of our other solutions as related to this EDRM. So if we just build out this slide, we can see that, hey, Core was really focused on helping customers, you know, find relevant data, put that data on hold and collect it and get it out of M365 to really manage e-discovery, you know, outside of M365, really just to search and get that data out. And then, of course, we have the information protection and governance, so I'm, I'm sure you'll hear about uh, at other parts of the day where you can set your retention schedules, your records, and of course your sensitive labels to protect content. So that kind of handles the upstream bit. But what I was saying earlier around how we had these needs for processing and review and further analysis. So advanced discovery kind of expands that box of relevance on the EDRM, where we're really able to help customers take the data they have in the system and get it ready for you know, just production and presentation. And this is especially important now, of course, you know, Katie has some awesome stats about the usage and of course the data explosion that's been ongoing for some time. 
the amount of data that's in some of these systems, you just can't really do what we're hearing from customers is to do the core e-discovery method is just unwieldy and just ends up with too much quantity of data. So you really need these kind of tools to be able to do some level of rationalization, processing, reviewing prior to coming out of a system like M365 now with the levels of adoption that we're seeing. So just to kind of set the context, as you go into your customer conversations, you'll probably end up talking with legal technology if you aren't already. The EDRM is a great way to kind of talk about how these solutions fit together and why do we think they're a great fit. Yeah, and just to add to that, Nick, the EDRM model is something that many legal teams, anybody who works with eDiscovery is going to be really familiar with. So understanding how core eDiscovery, how Microsoft Information Protection, and how advanced eDiscovery all fit together um, is incredibly important. The other piece to note is that review is something that takes up a huge amount of the time and cost for each of these teams to be able to uh, do their eDiscovery activities. And so being able to use M365 to cull down the data and being able to reduce the amount of information that needs to be reviewed is a huge customer benefit and to the benefit, you know, frankly, to the legal teams that are having to go through this amount of data. And if you can use machine learning, if you can use technology to really help that process, you can use automation, um, that can be a, a huge um, cost differentiator for, for customers using M365. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, and there's some really cool success cases around that that show, hey, just cutting down that data at the outset can really save a ton of time and cost downstream. Okay, excellent. So let's jump into the features. Uh, I wanted to kind of hit on some things that are existing and are available now. Wanted to make sure that people are aware of them, especially their high usage features that we're seeing a lot of traction from customers. And then also at the same time, kind of talk about related features that are coming up on the roadmap. So, you know, some of the trends that we've been seeing out in the market, just to set the context for the features are, you know, of course, accelerated cloud adoption and, you know, not teams, of course, but not just teams, also collaboration in the cloud in terms of SharePoint and OneDrive and kind of demands around how am I managing my collaboration and e-discovery of my collaboration content. And then we've also been hearing, hey, it's about scale. Like, the, as I mentioned earlier, the amount of content that we have, and we need to be able to manage tons of content in advanced e-discovery. Um, and of course, teams, and then, you know, using, uh, getting to a place where there's automation available. And so there's, those are kind of some of the areas that I'll hit on in terms of our feature development. So let's just go ahead and jump into the next slide. Uh, cloud attachments, this is one of the ones that uh, we have some great functionality out there and, you know, customers are using quite a bit. So this is kind of where you can collect cloud attachments that are relevant to the scope of your search kind of automatically and bring them into review and advanced e-discovery. And so, you know, by default, this brings the current version of the cloud attachment. So, you know, in the scenario where we're collaborating and I share a file to Steph and Katie and we continue to collaborate on it, uh, the one that I'll collect by default is actually the current, so the latest, the live version, but uh, the system will go out to SharePoint, OneDrive, grab that content if it's relevant to your search and bring it into the review set, which is a huge value. Some of you are probably familiar with how you might have done this in the past with uh, mapping things out and looking up links and going back and recollecting. So this has been a big one. With that, you can also collect all versions of a cloud attachment. So let's say you wanted to dive into specific versions and see what might have taken place within that version development or that collaboration. And so you have that option come into the review set. And then we, you know, we've kind of looked at the local attachment paradigm and brought that same kind of review experience where you're reviewing in the context of the communication. So you can kind of see, you know, hey, here's the here's the file that we're working on and understand either the email or the team's message that's related to and kind of have that ability to see them in context. And then what we have coming up that's really exciting is uh, working with our retention team, our information governance team. They've created a policy where they'll actually retain the version that's been shared of the cloud attachment. And so, you know, so instead of that current version that I might get already or all versions, I'll just get the version that was sent over to Katie and Steph at the time that we were collaborating. And the way that that will work is that it actually kind of captures a version and puts it in the preservation hold library. And that's a unique file that then is available for e-discovery. And the reason this is important is what we've been hearing from a lot of our heavily regulated customers is that is the relevant content. You know, whatever was said in that file at that time was is what needs to be found and discovered. And so you can see here in the screenshot, you know, there, there's this kind of confidential bit there in the lower right 
that could have been taken out in a subsequent version. And since I have the current as well as the shared version, I can kind of do that comparison and see if there was kind of that confidential information, that smoking gun that existed, but then was taken out in subsequent versions. So this is really exciting. This is uh, something that's on the roadmap coming out. We're working through the last bits of private preview and, and those pieces, so stay tuned. Next up was kind of this scale I mentioned. So, you know, if if you've been tracking kind of advanced e-discovery closely over the last couple of years, you may be aware, you know, we would handle about 3 million documents in a case, roughly. And so what we heard from customers was, hey, that's okay, but we need like 40 million records within a case. And so we set to work kind of creating this new way to manage some of the content so that we can do large collections, we can handle large amounts of data in each review set. So now with this large case format, you can collect up to a terabyte at a time and bring that into a review set. And you can have multiple review sets that are building out and you can essentially get to the levels of 40 million records within a single case and manage those all within that single case with reporting on kind of what sizes you're using within those review sets, kind of what capacity is available. And then we're also doing some uh, where we're bringing the cloud attachments into these cases on a default basis. So you're always going to get these cloud attachments and also handling the team's content, the conversations content that comes into these cases as transcripts. And so I want to go into this a little bit more uh, next, but with this large case format, it's in full public preview now. You know, if you have customers who are doing large volumes on a quick turn, definitely take a look at this. We're working on bringing it to GA over the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the team's transcript stuff next because that's kind of an interesting place and I think it fits really well with this, what we've seen and the trends that we're working towards addressing and, and the customer context and the demands that they're seeing. And so with the large case format and the need to have this scale level of content, you know, you think about Teams content as kind of providing a different paradigm than email for, for sure. And maybe some other chat as well, where it's, you know, small format messages, rapid, lots of content. And so one of the challenges we had when we were working through, you know, handling the amount of content that some of our customers were requiring was how do we manage all these items? There's just so many items and teams that are created. And so what we moved to was creating uh, kind of a transcript based. And some of you may be familiar with our conversation PDFs where we did time bound conversations so you can understand the context of the conversation around that message. And so to kind of make that even better and reduce the overall content included in these review sets, we, we transition this into a HTML transcript. And we think there's some really cool things about how this works and the, the feedback we've been getting. And so there's additional metadata that's now available from team side, which is really important. And so we're bringing those things like channel name, uh, and then when you go to produce and take the content out of the system, you have you know, much less overall content because these items are kind of brought together as a transcript into one Uber item that contains all the subordinate metadata and componentry. So that's a yeah. that's an exciting piece if you haven't looked at that, take a look. And one of the things that we're definitely hearing from customers is that uh, the team's transcripts and the large cases are game changers for a lot of them in terms of how they're looking at their e-discovery and how they're um, looking to to gather and process their data too. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So then, yeah, let's just keep going. Uh, predictive coding. This is something that is out in preview now. Uh, you know, this is uh, it's kind of this new module uh, where you can. We've really reduced kind of the barrier to entry to get started here. Um, you know, we were building on kind of our predictive coding 1.0 model. And some of the feedback that we heard from customers was, hey, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of setup. It's a lot of work to get it going. And then it's kind of a black box. Ultimately, we don't exactly know what's going on. It just kind of gives us a, you know, it tells us if it is or it isn't. And so what we wanted to do with this release uh, is really make it something that's way more visible, way more easy to get started. So it's about, you know, start with as few as 50 documents, uh, work through the workflow to train your model deploy your model and then use that as a way to filter down your content in the review set. And so if, take a look at this. This is going to be an interesting one to see kind of how it gets, how it lands with customers, how they're able to apply this across different case types that they're using on a regular basis. Uh, so far, the feedback has been good and, you know, that easy to get started nature of it, I think, has really enabled people to, to try it out uh, so far, which is great. 
And then the last bit I want to hit on is to make sure everybody was aware, and this is a great you know, place for partners and folks such as yourselves to dig in, is the APIs. So they, we've been working on Microsoft Graph APIs for advanced e-discovery for a bit now. We've had the initial set that kind of goes across the entire workflow available in beta, and we're looking forward to moving that into GA soon. So we're kind of working through the, the pieces there to make sure those are all ready. But we've already seen some really cool proof of concepts from partners and customers and customers and partners together. And we're super excited about this because it addresses a really you know, relevant pain point and common requests from customers where they say, hey, I need to be able to automate this stuff. I need to be able to, I'm doing these things all the time. And every week I need to be able to you know, set a set of jobs together and manage as a workflow and have it repeatable. And so the APIs have been a great complement to what some customers have been doing in the commandlets with Cori Discovery in terms of being kind of that graph platform where if you have folks around who know the graph platform, then that knowledge is going to be transferable. Uh, it's also going to give you kind of better performance, uh, faster iteration. There's some good stuff about being on the graph that will help you know, automate those processes. Uh, and support those customer requirements that we know are out there in the market. So if you haven't taken a look, you know, the documentation is there. You can get started with the Graph Explorer now in beta. And I think, you know, Steph maybe will share some of the proof of concepts and a little bit more about some of what we've been seeing with some of our early customers onto the Graph APIs so far as we go. So let's see, I guess we have a couple case studies that we wanted to round out with and then how are we doing on time? And then we'll switch to the demo. Yeah, so a couple things we wanted to hit on. Um, you know, sometimes we've heard from customers that, you know, doing things in place and searching across data, in particular when we had customers who might be comparing us to a compliance archive, like an offline archive where they've pushed all their data and now they're doing searches for what's relevant, is they've said, hey, this kind of takes a while. And we've improved on that in a number of places with the way that we're doing collections now, where you get a draft collection, that's really a pretty fast search. You can search across a lot of locations and get response results quickly and breaking down the workflow into different places. And there is a, a, a kind of a long running part in the middle of the process where we add content to the review set, but there's kind of good reasons why that's long running. And, and actually when you go look at a comparison of kind of our process as compared to outside of our process, we thought it'd be interesting just to kind of look at some data. We worked with a trusted partner to help us do some comparables, and it was really a pretty interesting analysis. And, you know, we just wanted to kind of put this together, this visual to help, you know, facilitate the conversation around, is this a longer running overall process to do it in place or is it not? And then that helps support that this is definitely a cost saving place to do this work. So we wanted to kind of put this together and, and ultimately, you know, we mapped out, hey, you doing the same kind of level of work for e-discovery using a third party service provider, um, you know, used by many of our shared customers and then using M365, kind of how does it add up? The same amount of data, the same kind of process, the same end result, you know, how long does this take? So. Pretty pleased with the results, you know, 30 hours to 58 hours, so 48% faster. Um, you know, I think there's some things in there. It still takes, took a while, but it was a lot of data is a big case. So um, wanted to kind of, you know, share this and let folks know that we think there is a good story there. Now, you might not get the seven second across your entire compliance cold archive, but we think that, you know, there's some ancillary benefits here as well as, you know, when you actually map it out, it doesn't actually take as long as you might think. So I wanted to kind of highlight that. And I think the other one we wanted to hit on was around just the kind of feedback and, um, you know, around the ability to, to reduce your costs. And so we think this is a huge compelling, you know, kind of cost savings ROI pitch for our customers, our shared customers. And, uh, you know, this just kind of breaks down, hey, what would it take if there was, you know, 130 gigs of data, 10 custodians, if I were to do this kind of all via third party vendors in a more traditional model, if I was going to do this with a combination of advanced e discovery and third party vendors, or if I was going to do this with advanced e discovery only. And we've seen some customers prove this out. It's not, it's not completely hypothetical. I mean, this is kind of the breakdown of what customers have been doing 
two or three years ago to what they're able to accomplish now. You know, with a combination of in-house advisory and looking at kind of the overall process. But quite compelling. We think there's a lot of opportunity and certainly supports some of the direction our customers are going where they're looking at doing more in place with the product set that's built into M365. So I think it's back to Katie to talk about the opportunities. Thank you. It's yeah. great to be here with everybody. And, you know, throw in your questions. We'll love to hear the feedback. Yeah, thanks, Nick. And feel free to add questions that you might have into the, the Q&A section of Teams Live event. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about from a very high level what some of the opportunities that we see for Microsoft partners are around e-discovery. Um, and again, this is from a very high level, but from an advisory perspective, there's a big opportunity there to talk to customers about how they're approaching their security or their compliance strategies and where M365 compliance and specifically e-discovery might fit into uh, their strategy. And that includes, like I mentioned at the beginning of the, the session, in addition to litigation, thinking about it from a security perspective, from an internal investigations perspective, where's the opportunity there for, for them to improve and for you as a partner to really help them along that journey? Second is the implementation piece, working with customers to architect and in, implement their e-discovery or investigations processes using um, 365 advanced e-discovery. And then manage services. And this can look like a lot of different things. This can be help with um, you know, investigations managed services, legal managed services, um, but really helping them along that compliance or security journey on an ongoing basis. And then the last big bucket I'd like to cover is from an ISV perspective, as Nick mentioned, uh, there's the opportunity to build and integrate products and applications with eDiscovery. And that capability is going to be extended even further in the coming months with the Microsoft Graph APIs for eDiscovery that are planning to come online here in November. And before I turn this over to Stephanie, I want to briefly touch on if the resources that we have available around advanced eDiscovery right now. Um, we have uh, very extensive documentation on how to use advanced eDiscovery. We also have a the learn track that's available that kind of walks through a, a bit of a demo as well as the assets that are available on demos.microsoft.com. We do have an upcoming eDiscovery Ninja page that we look forward to releasing in the coming weeks. Um, and then we also have compliance webinars that are being put on by engineering as well. And with that, I'll turn this over to Stephanie Beer to walk us through the demo, and we'll keep an eye on the Q&A if you have any questions. Thank you, Katie and Nick. And I'll say one housekeeping item while we wait for Stephanie to pull up her slides. If you can, before you leave the event, um, please take a few minutes to complete the short feedback survey that we will be posting. There'll be a, um, a link in the chat window. Uh, let us know how we did or if there's any content that you would like to learn more about. Like this is very important for us as we continue to uh, roll out and develop new content. Your feedback and input is very important, very much appreciate it. So. So you folks, Stephanie Beer, I'm a senior PM on the compliance engineering team. I wanted to give you guys a presentation on um, the advanced discovery solution in Microsoft 365. So I wanted to demo the story in 2x and we're going to start by touching on the insider risk solution that you guys have heard about over the past few days um, so with this sample customer here they've made a really strong effort over the past few months to classify their data and that would include the sensitive information using our microsoft information protection and dlp solutions and they agree that that investment that they made up front is definitely going to pay off downstream in setting up retention schedules data loss prevention insider risk and e-discovery so with the help of insider risk, when an employee ended up sharing sensitive information, the InfoSec team was able to identify an internal data leak. The plot thickens and the eDiscovery team was able to further investigate it. So we're gonna take a look at what that process looks like. So here we have our um, Microsoft Compliance Center. So this is your one-stop shop for all of the compliance solutions, MIP, eDiscovery, insider risk, information governance. We're going to go straight over to information governance here. So here we see um, specifically the insider risk page, the overall dashboard. It has all of your various alerts, active cases. And what we have here is we went directly into a case that had been created around a specific user, Sarazen Shane. And Sarazen had been sharing 
information, sensitive information with her personal Gmail account here. So we see the recipients of a specific message have been identified to be an external account and included in that message was some sensitive information types. So the InfoSec team can do some initial periphery investigation into what occurred here. And what they see as they explore the content that there was customer data specifically shared. So customer um, credit card information, customer social security numbers, lots of sensitive information that was specifically shared here. And at this point, they identify that they want to further investigate this and hand it off to their legal team. So what they actually are able to do is click a button and hit escalate to the uh, escalate to the for, for the investigation. And when they do that, what it actually happens is an e-discovery case is created within advanced e-discovery. So we're going to go ahead and name the case. It's going to be IRM Sarazen, add some additional information about it. And right when you pop over to advanced e-discovery, you see that the case was already created. When you go ahead and open up that case in advanced e-discovery under data sources here, we see that the Sarazen user has already been identified. So all of the content that have been identified from the insider risk solution has already been added to the e-discovery case. And if I dive a little bit further into theirs in here, I see that specifically the mailbox and her OneDrive site were already identified. But at this point, I want to view some additional activity that may have occurred, like file sharing operations or something that could possibly identify further information or other folks within the organization that she may be working with here. So we're going to go ahead and open the view activity here, which actually brings you up to an embedded experience with the unified audit log in M365. So here I'm able to already see that the user that has been selected is already populated and I can specifically isolate activities. So in this case, I want to see any time that Sarazen has shared a file over a specific period of time. And in doing so, I bring up my results here and I see that there have been lots of file share operations, and one that is of particular interest has been with one of her peers, Igor Beckerman. So at this point, I've determined I want to go ahead and investigate Igor as well as Therizen. This is where we're going to go over to our custodian management page. And at this point, we already know that Therizen is a custodian. She is a user that we're going to be investigating further, but we also want to investigate Igor a little bit further here. So we're going to go through this lovely custodian experience where we're able to identify additional sources related to Igor. It's a very simple experience. I can go ahead and type in his name and automatically populates the user within my tenant. And we see here with the easy experience, it identifies Igor's mailbox and his OneDrive site automatically. But I also have the opportunity to identify additional exchange locations or SharePoint sites for collaboration, but also any teams that he's currently a member of. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Teams location here and see any teams that Igor is currently a member of. And here I see that Igor is a member of the DLP team. I may want to investigate that a little bit further, so we're going to go ahead and add that as an additional source associated with Igor here. And here we see on this final screen here, the OneDrive site is selected, the mailbox is selected, and two additional teams. And the next thing that I want to do is to determine if I want to place this content on hold. And this will preserve the data, whether the deletion could be intentional or unintentional, the data is preserved in place with no impact to the end user. They're not able to see that they're on hold, but their content is preserved for discovery purposes. So going through, we went ahead and review, and we're going to go ahead and select and uh, go ahead and enter and create that custodian here. So now we have Sarazen and Igor, and these are our two custodians that we want to further investigate. The next step in the process through EDRM is collection. And some people may be familiar with our query discovery solution or our content search solution where you've just done these searches. So in advanced e-discovery, we have a richer experience and we're going to call it collection. So we already have two collections that were already created, one that was automatically collected through the insider risk solution. But I do want to do some further collection on Igor's content to see if there's anything that may be relevant going on between Sarazen and Igor here. So I'm going to go ahead and name the, name the collection here, Igor Communication. And I'm able to select any custodian data sources that already exist here. So when you open this pane up, I can see that Sarazen and Igor are the options, the two custodians that have already been identified. We're going to specify Igor here. 
And we're going to drop straight down into using some additional conditions to define the collection. So you do have the opportunity to collect entire locations so the entire mailbox, the entire OneDrive site, and entire SharePoint site. Or I can refine my search a little bit with additional query parameters. So we have built-in condition cards that make that really easy for your um, eDiscovery administrators and folks to query specific data. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select kind Microsoft Teams, which will bring back Teams messages. But I also want to specifically identify Microsoft Teams messages that occurred between Igor, the custodian here during this collection, and Sarazen, the participant that we um, have identified through the Insider Risk Solution. So with this specific query, it'll bring back Teams messages between Igor and Sarazen that we can investigate a little bit further. And as Nick had mentioned in the previous slides, um, there are two very key uh, value adds with advanced e-discovery, one being the availability of bringing in contextual Teams conversations and putting them into this HTML transcript um, format, and the other being the collection of cloud attachments. So if at any point somebody uh, had, Igor had shared a document with Sarazen or vice versa, we're able to bring in those cloud attachments from uh, source locations that weren't identified through this process. So we're gonna go ahead and commit to this collection. Now we get to go straight over to our review set. So if you guys are not aware, review makes up the bulk of the EDRM cycle. It is the most uh, costly step of e-discovery. So with our advanced e-discovery solution, we make it easy to identify relevant content, query content further, run the analytics on it, group the content together, and make a nice streamlined experience for your in-house review team. So here we have, um, the display with several viewers. You have a rich native text viewer. You can also view plain text, additional metadata about the content. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can further filter the content to try and find specifically opportunities where these two custodians here were communicating. So I'm gonna use our filter option here, which the filters are organized into four different sections. The search section that gives additional search capabilities, analytics and predictive coding. These filters are properties that are generated when you run the analytics job or use the predictive coding model. There's also specific IDs, so those are IDs of properties for documents. And then there's also additional item properties. So this will enable you to filter for document or message properties. So we're gonna go ahead and expand on item properties specifically. And I see here recipients and sender. And I want to be able to identify again anytime there was communication between Sarazen and Igor here. So when I run that filter specifically, I see two communications brought back. I'm going to go ahead and select one here, and you'll see a Teams conversation that took place between these two folks. So here it's in this lovely HTML transcript view. It's a similar rich experience that your end users see in the team solution, but we are grouping these conversations or these chat messages together in one single file for review. But if you see on the bottom there, there is um, a button called document family. So from that, I see an indication that there were documents shared. As you can see, there's an attachment there within the team's message. I wanna be able to actually view those attachments. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on document family, which will bring back all of those associated cloud attachments that were shared within that team's conversation. So here we have the messages grouped together with those associated attachments. If I select one of the attachments here, again, I can see some sensitive information that was shared. It looks like social security numbers and credit card numbers. So from the legal investigation standpoint, I've identified that this is probably something that's relevant that I want to bring over to our HR department to investigate, for, to investigate a little bit further and determine action. So I'm going to go ahead and tag these files so I know these specific files are ones that I want to export out to our um, HR department. And with that, I'm able to put together all of the tagged files that I've deemed to be relevant for our HR team to make their decision. So I tag them. And then I simply hit the export button. What that does is it exports out these files in their native format, and then the team's conversations will be exported out in HTML format for further review. With one simple button, you hit export, and the job is created. So with that, we went from the insider risk solution where we identified a possible data leak due to 
our content being classified properly, our sensitive data being classified properly, and we were able to further investigate through our legal team and pass this data off to our HR team. Integration between all of the compliance solutions was able to identify an actual data uh, leakage within this sample company. And with that, I will hand it back over to Katie.